Asa Mitaka, everyone's favorite femcel girl loser that is, in my opinion, a lot more relatable of a character compared to our boy Dennis here. Asa has essentially taken over the main character role. We see things in her perspective for most of part 2, is the current host of the War Devil, her character is the main focus, and in my opinion, is somehow scummier than Denji. No, 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 not in like an actual scumbag kind of way, more like a high school weezer loving edgy loser kind of way. She hates people, narcissistic, egotistical, socially awkward, funny in a cringe way, insensitive, and is in general a total loser in society's eyes. Ah, <sighs> it's like, it's like looking in the mirror. Look, what I'm trying to say is that Durian and Asma get along so well because they're quite literally the same person, with the main difference being their upbringings. Even so, Anko's character is one that is insurmountably more intriguing and interesting to me compared to Danny. Ah, oh, fuck, it's the Denji Glazers again. Hold on, I'll be right back. Chill out, guys! Oh my god, chill out, chill out. Oh my god, what's this in my hand? A flash drive with pictures of oiled up Makima and Reze. You want it? Yeah, you want it, you want it? Go fetch, go get it! Bye bye, bye bye! Jesus. Fucking animals. I swear to god. Don't get me wrong, Denji is awesome. But in terms of their value as a character, Asa is miles ahead. Let me explain. Mom, mom. Uh, what now, son? Remember Asa from Chainsaw Man when you read it last? Who? This character. You know, remember her? Oh, yeah. What was your take on her again? I remember her being really funny, especially since she reminded me of you. <laughs> what? She reminded me of you when you were in high school. You were like super awkward. Like you were in a band and seemed like you were having a hard time making friends. Huh? You really don't remember? You were fucking cringe. Mom, where the fuck did you learn that word? Remember the last video I made about Denji, where I told you guys not to relate to him and to hold yourself to higher standards? Well, even though the bar is low, Asa is that standard. Well, considering most of you guys are Chainsaw Man fans, I'm, this is a great step regardless. <laughs> Denji and Asa are very similar people at the end of the day. They are both very brash and insensitive. But what is different about these two characters is how these negative aspects of them are portrayed. Denji doesn't really follow a societal norm, mainly because he doesn't know how to. Based on his childhood, he has never had the need to follow such ideas, worrying about more important things like basic survival. Asa, on the other hand, was raised in a more generic setting. She had parents, a house, food on the table. I feel this is the reason why I connect with her more compared to Denji. Where Denji has to start from the ground up and build to become a better person, Asa is already a character that we can relate to more, has more relatable problems, issues, and much, much more. Let's take a look at the first chapter of part two. Asa's introduction starts with her being spiteful to her peers and the people around her. She then has the courage to be more enthusiastic and have a brighter look at life. And this feels like a generic character development point, realizing that the world isn't as dark as they originally perceived. You know, that shonen type shit. And right when this happens, she falls on Bucky and reverts back to her more pessimistic nature. And as the plot progresses, she obviously strives to be a better person especially after the death of Yoko. This is so much relatable compared to Denji's wants and needs. The struggle of trying to be better, taking one step forward and five steps back is something that she struggles with and is in my opinion a lot more compelling and relatable. A really good example of her complexity can be seen in the Falling Devil arc. I do want to say that there is going to be a content warning for this part because it is a sensitive topic, especially when it comes to depression and uh, sewer slides, so yeah, just a heads up. The Falling Devil, from beginning to end, was a mystery, especially since she basically came out of the blue. This whole arc can also be portrayed as how not to deal with past trauma. When Asa succumbs to the Falling Devil's power, she is reminded of a traumatic experience, where her caretaker took the life of her beloved pet, a companion that's been with her since the death of her mother. Yoru tries to snap her out of it by causing bodily pain, like her finger and hand numbing the trauma that she was reminded of. The two of them argue and banter with one another, but in the end, Asa cannot overcome this past trauma. In short, this whole interaction can be compared to one dealing with trauma with self-harm. While it does distract you from feeling and thinking about certain things, it is only a temporary solution and could only get you so far. On a brighter note, let's take a look on how Denji deals with the situation. Oh, he just destroys his whole head and stops the thoughts altogether. All right cool. Still not good guys, it's because he has regeneration and because he's a fucking idiot, okay? Still not good, still not good. I cannot stress that enough. Anyways, Denji eventually comes to save the day by trying to remind Asa of the good things in life. And while Denji is on the verge of saving Asa from falling, she reminds him that 
and quote, no woman in existence would want to have sex with a guy with a chainsaw sticking out of his head. And the moment this happens, Denji again succumbs to the falling devil's power. This scene, although hilarious, shows the complexity of each of these characters. Asa is dealing with more complex trauma and experiences and handles it by overthinking, while Denji wants to die when he's told that no one would want to sleep with him. To me, Asa just feels like more of a character and a person compared to Denji. And before I move on to my next point, let me just put on my tinfoil hat real quick. I think Fujimoto intentionally made it this way. The best instance I can relate this to is an Attack on Titan, where seasons 1 through 3 felt like groundwork for the true essence of the show. Season 4. Eren, while he is the main character and the protagonist for the first three seasons, slowly transitions into the main antagonist, making way for the new protagonists to shine, those being the Eldian candidates and the surviving members of the Survey Corps. Part 1 of Chainsaw Man feels exactly like this, making the groundwork for Asa's character development in Part 2. The day we went on our first motorcycle ride, I felt your body heat for the very first time. Your head was a chainsaw, yet I couldn't deny that your warmth was human. In retrospect, Every time you save my life, my body is cold as can be frozen as ice. Although I'm doomed to always end up alone, you always came to my rescue. That much I know. That was... Holy shit, dude. That was cringe as fuck. <laughs> Denji's main struggles in part 1 revolved around the fact that nothing revolved around him. While he was striving for just the basic needs in life, like toasted bread, a nice place to sleep, and... That's basically it. More important things around him were happening in the background. Reze was just there for Pochita, the international assassins were there only for Makima, and the public safety's plot to eliminate only her. Let's assume Denji was out of the picture. Whee! Now let's replace him with, uh, I don't know, this JPEG of a coconut crab I found. The objectives of each antagonist in each arc would still be the same regardless of who has Pochita. Obviously Denji would do a better job defending against them compared to a coconut crab, but what I want you to realize is that Denji never really mattered. Denji's final character arc was realizing that he can be this kind of person. A person that strives for more, someone that is worthy of someone's attention. And it is further proven with the fact that, as far as we know, was the only person able to break Makima's contract with the Prime Minister out of technicality. Because Denji is the way he is, and with his experiences leading up to this point, was able to see this attack as instead a sign of love. Asa, on the other hand, never gets to this realization, nor has a reason to. Asa is more developed as a person and character. Whether it's a difference in their upbringings, or a total difference in personality and opinions is unimportant. What is important is the fact that Denji already knows this. This is because her character is more developed than, let's be honest, the bare minimum of development. In short, Asa already has this idea from the get-go, allowing us to explore different aspects of her views, struggles, and much more. Nah, shit. Oh, wait, hold on, they're back. Oh, oh, hey, is that now Yuta? Oh my god, I think that's her! Yeah, look, she looks just fine. She's not actually dead. Look, she's right there. Yeah, yeah, 10 miles north in that direction. Yep, just, just keep going that way. Yep, you'll find her. She's alive. Okay, that might have hit too close to home this time. It may seem like I'm shitting on Denji because I, I kinda am, but let me point out some good aspects. Now that Denji has gone through this character development in part 1, he can finally start catching up to Asa, and we have already seen instances of this start to rear their head in the most recent chapters. You can't have your cake and eat it too is a phrase I think describes Denji perfectly in part 2. He is constantly seen trying to choose between the best of both worlds, with the main one being his struggle to maintain the life he has now while also being Chainsaw Man. And we are shown that every time he tries to have both, it terribly backfires on him. Because he wants to both maintain his life and be Chainsaw Man resulted in him being cut into pieces and Nayuta being MIA, essentially losing both. A good reference you can use is Miles from Spider-Verse. Trying to save his dad and the world could lead to more detrimental consequences. Whether Miguel or Miles ends up being right in the end is irrelevant. With what is given right now, Miles is currently in the wrong and so is Denji. I feel that Fujimoto will use this newfound selfishness as a way to develop his character even more, and I can't wait to see it. Because seriously, we need more dermatitis love, okay? He's been going through the ringer for like the past couple of chapters. Down, down, down. 
In short, Us's self-realization journey feels more natural, relatable, more developed than Denji's, and is like that by design. Because of the groundwork laid in part 1, supports and justifies the plot points in part 2. Like I mentioned in a previous video, Denji is undeniably an amazing character. The way Fujimoto portrays his development, ideals, upbringings, and perspective is just amazing. But sadly, due to the lack of development as a child, has to start from the ground up, only just developing common knowledge that many people should already know. But this is not to say that this weakens his character. If anything, it strengthens it. Because he's starting with the bar so low, his development can only go up from here. And the journey, I'm sure, will be amazing to follow as part 2 progresses. Asa, on the other hand, feels like a better Denji. She has more abstract ideals, is a lot more relatable, actually has a brain, and not horny 24-7. Because she is more developed as a person, has more complex struggles, and this is only exemplified with the addition of Denji. With Denji being such a ball of pure chaos, Asa is faced with challenges that Denji can only dream of. And if you think about it, every challenge Asa is going through in the series is because of Denji or Chainsaw Man. Yoro is there for Pachita, Denji is one of Asa's first crush, and is the reason why she's so conflicted when she finds out he's actually Chainsaw Man and so, so, so much more. With all these factors combined, Asa takes the groundwork Denji laid in part 1 to make her development even better. And that's why I think Asa is so much better. But anyways guys, that's the end of the video. As per usual, I'll leave some clips with some audio. Enjoy. Funny, funny, uh... <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> My logs. I wish I could do damage to these guys. I really wish I could. Use this as cover! Use this as cover! It's working? What? Hello? It didn't work! It didn't work! <laughs> oh, I hear a chant. That means they're nearby. <laughs> Oh, that means that something's about to blow up, right? Yep! <laughs> still in here. I started I'm throwing shit! Don't worry guys, they have no soul. There's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to feel bad about. I'm gonna put you roll that If you Here we go again. Race yourselves. Here we go again. Oh my pretty prince Fuck. Hello? Okay, that was weird. Uh let's just forget the last like five seconds and um let's um let's keep going here.